Good morning or good afternoon, good evening to everyone. It seems like we have a great uh, big audience this morning and uh, the audience is uh, here from around the globe. So good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, and I'm happy to be here this morning to talk with you a little bit about aligning customer data, uh, leveraging Zoe capabilities, my name is Ravit, uh, and I am the SVP of Product Management uh, in Totengo. I believe I had the chance to meet many of you in the past, uh, but not in that context. So let's drill down a little bit and talk about Zoe and how Zoe can enable and help you aligning customer data across your customers. So one of the things we already learned in the last few years, and I think it's even proved itself to be more impactful um, in the last year, uh, is that everyone participates in customer success. When it comes to our customers, no one is outside of the picture. We as the customer success team interact with the customers. The support team interacts with the customers. The sales team interacts with the customers. All of us interact with the customers. And this is very important to make sure that everyone will participate and will be aligned when it comes to customer status. Why is it more important now than ever? We are obviously in a special year. Uh, I guess most of us are actually listening to this webinar from home, um, but collaboration was always a key in order to make sure our customers are successful and making, making sure customer data is shared between any, everyone was always needed. But I would say that those days uh, where all of us are working from home um, and we are working in virtual teams, this move to remote workers and virtual teams make the need for sharing and collaboration even more important. Now we are no longer in a situation where we can tap someone's uh, back and ask him a question about one of the customers. We are no longer in a situation where we see one each other. And we need to make sure that we are still collaborating effectively and share effectively customer data. What does it mean sharing customer data and how do we want to collaborate around customer? So when we launched Zoe, we did a lot of analysis how teams should cooperate in order to work together around the customer. And we found out that the process is usually being uh, built out of three main steps. The first one is I wanna make sure that customer data is shared across all customers. I wanna make sure that customer data is available to every um, role in the company. Then I wanna enable them to participate in customer success ask questions and get data and then react on top of it. And lastly, when I need to um, drive in specific activity, let's assume there's an escalation and I wanna engage support and finance, I need to enable them to create an impact to make sure that they not only consume the data, but they are taking active part in driving customer success. So now before we'll move on, uh, let's launch the first uh, poll, please, Lorena. Let's see, are you already participating today? Sorry, are you already engaging today and collaborating with your teams? Thank you for all the ones that participate. And I have to say the answer is yes, we are always participating and collaborating with our teams which is very, very important to know. This is one of the things that uh, drives our success. And I'm happy to see that many of you already see the need to collaborate with your team members and with different roles in the organization. And Zoe can help you do that more effectively. So from an uh, analysis we did between uh, around our customers and our users, we try to understand who are the parties that um, our customers are um, collaborating with? And if you look on this uh, diagram, the dark green that you can see on the left side show you how many people are uh, collaborating 
with a different role, more than 25%. And then, um, and then um, how many are um, actually collaborating more than 50%? You can see the examples here when I'm working with support or operations or marketing. In all of these cases, I'm collaborating heavily between those uh, teams and customer success. It's very important to make sure that as you can see over here, I'm keeping the channels open. I have an, uh, an open channel to speak with sales, to share my feedback with product management, to share feedback with support, so it's not only a CS engagement, it's a CS engagement with our customers, always with collaboration with the different groups in the company. Let's see some examples. When am I collaborating? So um, one is the obvious. I'm a salesperson and I'm going to meet one of my um, uh, accounts. I wanna get some visibility to the status of the account. Another example can be when one of my uh, salespeople or marketing manager look for a reference uh, customers to create a video or to do a demo. They can look for customers that were marked as reference customers. It's very important that it will be easy to get this data. Another use case that I'm sure many of you are looking at is the CEO went to a meeting with one of our important customers and he needs to make sure he will have the data on that individual customers prior to the meeting, but also be able to document the outcomes of this meeting after the meeting. Now, you all are aware, and I'm sure you all practice that in your day to day, when the CEO is meeting a customer, he is very, very busy. He doesn't have time usually to invest a lot in documenting the meeting. Leveraging Zoic capabilities, and we'll see that in a minute, will give him the ability to document the meeting in a very easy manner. And lastly, another example is when the uh, chief revenue officer will ask you questions about renewals and renewals at risk and many other questions that he would like to get the data for. Instead of coming over to you or to one of your employees, pulling data on um, the different renewals, now he can pull this data independently to Zoe without drilling down to any, um, any, um, any of you. So let's see how you can access Zoe. Zoe is available through many applications. You can access Zoe data through Zendesk, Salesforce, to your uh, mobile app, uh, through Slack, or to, to Tango Zoe web application. In all of those cases, you will be able to get data on the different accounts that you're working with, to document data on the different accounts that you're working with to each one of those channels. Now, um, how does it look and which data is available? We'll see in a minute. But what is important to understand is that we want to make sure that if you are or one of your uh, colleagues is spending, is a support person, and spending uh, most of the day, for example, in Zendesk, he will be able to continue work in Zendesk and still consume data that you're collecting through Tutango, uh, leveraging Zoe capabilities in Zendesk. So let's see how does it look. So here you can see an example, very simple example, uh, to one of the tickets I'm looking at in Zendesk. And when I see that on the right side uh, in this uh, green um, area, you can see the Tutango insights that give you information about an account. Uh, in this example, about a person, I'm talking with a lady called Maria. I can see the data on her as well as getting insights on the account that she's taking part of. What's the status of the account? What is the account held? How much they are paying? All of this data is very meaningful for me as a support manager or support engineer when I engage uh, with that account or when I'm coming to handle that specific support tickets. Another example is within Salesforce. So your sales team is spending most of their day in Salesforce and still they wanna get visibility to data that you're collecting within Tutango. 
Now they can access all this data through Salesforce uh, using the Zoe functionality that comes here in the Tutango tab. So you can see all the data here um, and get visibility to what were the last engagements with the accounts, what's the status of the accounts, how much the account is paying, things that not necessarily you mark in Tutango. Yeah, sorry, you mark in Salesforce. In Tutango, you will be able to get additional data on the account, who is the account team that is working with the account, all of it will be available. One more example uh, that I wanna drill down to is how does um, Zoe is working when I'm leveraging it in Slack? You can refer to Zoe as one more team member that is working with you and you can ask her questions. Let's see how it looks like. Um, So I'll just go to my Slack. Uh, this is an example of one of the teams that I created and I can access Zoe. So I can, first of all, say uh, Zoe help and see what are the specific um, commands that Zoe know how to support. And I can see here multiple um, examples. I can ask Zoe on um, renewals. Maybe she will be able to tell me about upcoming renewal, sorry. Let's see if there's a meaningful data here. And yes, Zoe is telling me that there's our 24 renewal in poor health. And obviously I wanna see what's going on with those because it represents $1.3 million. It's a lot of money. So now I can drill down and see here, which accounts are in renewal right now and what is their status? And I can get details on the account type, the status, the health rank of this account. If I wanna drill down further more to 3D design account, which interests me, I can click on account info. And now, as you can see, I will get a more detailed data on this account. Now I see there is a problem with this account and I will ask the CEO maybe to go ahead and meet them to see what's going on and why is there a status like that? And let's say that happened and the CEO will meet this account. I would like him, as we mentioned before, to document his engagement with the account. Now he doesn't have to Tango access when he finished the meeting. He's usually not logging into the tool on a daily basis, but he still wanna document this touch point, this engagement that he had with his customer. So now he can do it from here as well. If I ask Zoe to add attachment, sorry. Now I can, um, Zoe is asking me to which account I would like to add the touch point. And let's say this account is called 3D Design, the one we are just seeing. As you can see, I'm just interacting with, with Zoe, like she's another team member to Slack from my team. I'm telling her that I would like to add uh, attachment for this account. And the answer is there are a few accounts with this name. Is that the one you were looking for? APAC 3D Design Enterprise Content Management? Yes. So now Zoe is asking me, what is the touch point? And I will tell her, um, I would like the CEO to meet with the account. Let's say that's a touch point. Okay, so now the last question that Zoe will ask me, how do I wanna uh, categorize this engagement? Is that part of renewal? Is that part of support, escalation? Because this account is poor, I believe it should be part of escalation. So I will mark it as part of the escalation success flow. And then this is it. The last thing I have to do is to mark this as just record this, touch point and the touch point is, um, is added to Tutango. So now any person that will log into Tutango will see the data on this account. If I will, um, if I will ask Zoe just to see the data, let's see if I can see it from here. Okay, so Zoe pulled the information on that individual account 
Now I'll go to the account info. I see all the data. You can see also the NPS, the uh, customer satisfaction score that was released uh, for that that was uh, given to this account. And now I click touch point and I can see that my touch point was locked. So basically I leveraged Zoe through Slack in that specific example to a very immediate activity, which is adding a touch point. It took me minutes. I didn't have to get any access to any system. I just used Slack as my collaboration tool in that um, example. So now, last thing before we'll have to do some questions, instead of me telling you how great is Zoe and how helpful it can be, I would like to um, uh, play a, a YouTube video that Ilana Brown, Vice President of Customer Success in Seven Rooms, have recorded a few weeks ago about how Zoe enabled them to achieve meaningful customer success. I'm really excited to talk to you about uh, Seven Rooms and uh, Seven Rooms is a guest experience platform that enables hospitality operators to provide a personalized experience for their guests through data and technology. So a few months ago, we started talking about how can we expand this journey beyond just in-service dining? And there's a plethora of data that sits inside all of the preferences that you guys have when you're ordering delivery. So ultimately owning and building a, a direct guest relationship through and through uh, was the end goal. You know, we had to reshape our business completely, um, especially with customer success. Everyone was in blitz mode. Um, sales was selling a practically free product to help save our industry, save the devastated restaurants, give them, you know, some, some chance of survival through this. Uh, and CS and onboarding needed to get everyone up and running really, really quickly. So our onboarding process and you know supporting of this new online ordering tool was launched day one into Tango. For anybody in CS, I mean, the worst and most annoying question to me at least is like, how's my account doing? Like, how's my account doing? I have no idea what that means. Like, does that mean you're interested in doing something about it? Do you wanna help? Um, are you just curious? Do you wanna upsell them? Do you wanna call them? Like. What does that mean? We launched Zoe. Um, and now no one has to ask any single person on my team that dreaded question again. Now they can just ask Zoe. Um, people can ask like, how is this account doing? And they know exactly how much revenue they've generated um, from delivery, from our direct delivery or online ordering platform. They also know how much money they've saved. So a salesperson can say like, hey, I wanna do an expansion to that deal. Um, they have multiple restaurants. And I'm curious how much money they've saved. And so they just ask Zoe and Zoe says like, you know, they've saved $20,000 since they launched in commission fees that they would have otherwise been paying to these third parties. Um, you know, so it's really been an absolute game changer. It keeps a lot of people on the same page um, and, you know, leveraging technology and, and different tools that, that we have available to us um, are the only thing that have made the last few months possible. Um, and seeing as we're all remote, it's even more challenging to stay connected and aligned. And I would finally say that, you know, the team is working off the same set of facts. Um, so we pivoted the business, you know, we built a whole new process with less people. I truly, truly don't know how we would have been able to mobilize as fast as we did, um, just in terms with so, so few people and, um, you know, just all the different things that we were able to build really, really fast because we had kind of unknowingly set ourselves up for success beforehand. Without Tatango, I literally cannot imagine the, the manual workload that would have been put on my team. We would not have been able to launch at the speed um, that we were able to while still having any element of like proactiveness and proactive messaging to our clients um, and help set them up for success. So thank you uh, for listening. And I think one thing that is important uh, to call out before I'll open it to some questions is that obviously this uh, video was recorded uh, in the last few months, as you heard uh, Ilana speaking about the challenges they have on the fact that they had to uh, change their business. So COVID hit uh, last year, yes, at the end of last year or the beginning of this year, um, and many things have changed. I think the 
feedback that we see and the facts in the um, around us within our customers base uh, proved very heavily that collaboration is needed more than it used to, and it's very critical. And for that, you can obviously leverage uh, Zoe in many of the use cases. So with that, I would like to um, I'm open- I'm really excited to talk sorry. to you. I would like to um, open it for a few questions and um, make sure that I can address your questions or concerns. Lorena, do we have questions? Yes, we do. Um, here's a question. Does Zoe really come with an all version? So Zoe come um, in every Tatango version, you can uh, purchase Zoe. Zoe is basically uh, comes in um, one package. You buy licenses for Zoe and then one license enable you to connect either to Zendesk or to Salesforce or to mobile or to any other um, way that I just presented. So basically it's the same license. When you are buying one Zoe license, you can engage with Zoe to any of those channels. You don't need to decide how are you going to engage with Zoe when you're uh, purchasing those licenses. Great, the next question is, I have a license for Spark. Do I need another one for Zoe? No, you don't. So all the users that have Spark license can access um, all the data that Zoe enabled you to access. You either need a Spark license or a Zoe license. You do not need more. If you own Spark license, as all our customers, many of our uh, customers and users have today, you can access all the data and uh, can uh, get full access uh, to Tatango Spark. If you own only Zoe license, you will be able to leverage all the tools that we spoke for the limited use cases uh, that Zoe enable you to drive. Usually Spark is being used by the customer success team to drive customer success, to drive the engagement with customers, to drive the communication with customers where the rest of the people in the company that still need access to customer data will leverage Zoe, data, uh, Zoe license. Okay, great. There's another one. When in Zendesk and looking at a ticket, are you able to customize the Chitango panel along the right side of the ticket? Yes, you can define which data will appear there. Great. The next question, does Zoe enable me to share Chitango reports? So from Chitango, you can share data to Zoe. You can just uh, schedule it and share data to Zoe. It uh, enable you to share segments. In the future, we are working um, as well on the ability to share additional reports with management, scorecard, additional capabilities that will be coming around sharing of data at the beginning of next year. Awesome, and the final question, is the Salesforce to Tango tab only available through Zoe or is it also available through Spark? It's again, if you have a Zoe license, you will be able to access it. If you're uh, owning a Spark license, you will be able to access it as well because Spark license is a super set. Great. And for those people that do not currently have Tatango, um, as you can see on your screen, we have Tatango, uh, a free community edition. Feel free to go to tatango.com slash sign up today and get started. It um, allows you to get started, upload your data. You have full control. It's easy, fast, and available for you to use right now. Um, one last question just came in. Can you define the data insights field you're looking to search or is it pre-populated? Again, sorry, I couldn't. No problem. Yeah. Can you define the data insights fields you're looking to search or is it pre-populated? I will say it depends where. In Slack, you are getting all the data uh, that you have uh, configured into Tango Spark. So if you as an organization decided that uh, specific data is important as part of, for example, the key information for the account, this is the data that will be exposed. So the customization is being done through Spark, the Tango Spark, where you manage the engagement and that the data can be consumed in the different um, tools that we talked. 
and you have another one, Ravi. Um, I can see the ROI on each license can be easily realized if a company uses Zendesk, Slack, and Salesforce. We only use Salesforce. So would we pay exactly the same as another company using all three? I'm not familiar with Spark as yet. I only joined three weeks ago. So perhaps that is more suitable. So I think it will be, and I'll be happy to drill down and help offline. I think we need to understand the use case. Uh, if you're only using uh, Salesforce, it doesn't change anything in regard to the price because you can consume Zoe data through Salesforce and uh, the web application. But I suggest engage either with the uh, product team or with the salesperson and get additional data on that. Okay, awesome. So I hope that was uh, insightful and all of you got some more visibility to the great capabilities that Zoe can deliver and how she can help, um, especially in the reality we are at right now, where we wanna make sure we are collaborating effectively between all roles in the organization. And there's a lot of data that is being uh, coll uh, collected and kept in Tango where you would like to dem democratize it and make sure it's available for everyone. If there's any other questions, I'll be happy to answer uh, offline. And for all of you that joined, thank you.